What's up everyone? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com and I'm about to speak with the 10-2 UFC heavyweight Timothy Johnson as he is headed to Belfast, Northern Ireland for UFC Fight Night 99 to take on Bellator's former heavyweight champion Alexander Volkov as he is making his promotional debut. So let's give Timothy Johnson a call and find out what he's been up to since his last fight. Find out what he has in store for Alexander Volkov. And uh, kind of see what it's like to uh, be traveling all over the world. Ah, Mr. Timothy Johnson, how are you, sir? Uh, not too bad. Just sitting around, uh, actually waiting to, waiting to go into the grocery store here and grab some food. <laughs> oh, okay, nice. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking out the time. Uh, huge fight on your hands. You're headed to Belfast, Northern Ireland for UFC Fight Night 99. You're taking on a former world champion and Alexander Volkov. What are your thoughts? Um, I, just like any other fight, I haven't really read into it too much. Uh, eh, another M1 guy. <laughs> um, so this will make number three. So I don't know if I get a, if I get another win, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if they'll send me a couple belts or not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, why not? Now, so right now you're ten and two uh, in your MMA career. You were an all-American collegiate wrestler. Um, what kind of made you take the leap from collegiate wrestling to MMA? Um, well, actually, uh, in Fargo here, there was a couple uh, big heavyweights that were in MMA. Um, one was, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tusher, Chris Tusher, who fought for the head of the little stint in the UFC there. He was, uh, you know, Brock's, like, main uh, training partner for a bit. Uh, and then uh, Zach Thumb. And so I just got – the year I got done with wrestling – you know, the, they were working out in the gym here, and they just kind of need big bodies. And as you know, if you're a big body, you know, they're kind of hard. They're few far to come by. So uh, they asked me to just come in and wrestle around with them as a training partner. So uh, kind of got a, did it for a couple of weeks, got the bug, and then eventually started. I'm like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a fight. Let's see, let's see what this is all about. And, and, uh, and I'll honestly just kind of fell into it, and that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> okay, so it kind of picked you, so to speak. Yeah. It, yeah, that's definitely awesome. Uh, you stay in Southpaw. Is that because you're left-handed, or is that from your wrestling stance? Um, it's from my wrestling stance. Um, I'm kind of I'm opposite. I'm not. I don't really have a dominant hand. Like I'll throw right-handed. I'll kick right-handed. But I like I write left-handed. I eat left-handed. Like mm. I'm not really ambidextrous. I just kind of do things opposite. So yeah. it was easier for them to teach me how to you know, box southpaw, then switch my wrestling stance that I've had since I've been, you know, five years old. Okay. Well, you yeah. had your uh, UFC de debut against Shamil Abdurahimov. Is that... Is hey, that... You, you pronounce it ten times better <laughs> than I do. <laughs> I, I tried. I honestly tried. Uh, it was... It only lasted a round. Uh, it was a lot of jockeying for position. And then 30 seconds left, you just... You know, you kind of had him think in one pace, and then you just blitzed him. I mean, you, you came at him, you took him down, mounted him, and just unleashed thunder on him. Uh, after that, you you had a little bit of a different matchup. You faced a, fe a fellow collegiate wrestler in Jared Rochalt. Absolutely grueling fight. I mean, that just watching it made me tired. I mean, it yeah. was um, yeah, it was it was it was two wrestlers just really just. The whole time grinding, and in that fight, in the uh, the last thirty seconds of the whole fight, you you blitzed him again. I mean, you just you let your hands go and you started tagging him. What is it about the like last thirty seconds that you just kind of go for it? Um. Well, it's because you're gonna get a break no matter what. Last thirty seconds, you know you're gonna get a break, so you might as well, you know, open it up a little bit. Uh, and that's just something that we've always we've always done. You know, my corner man. Um, I'll have him count down. I'll let, he'll yell out two and a half. You know, that means we're halfway. And then from there, he'll go two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds. So it's just something that we've always trained. Um, and it's, it's kind of been my mentality for wrestling too. Like I picture that last, you know, where you, you'll get a lot of takedowns because guys will take breaks on the edge of the mat. So right there is your best opportunity to, you know, release, you know, go hard, really hard for something. That's kind of the same thing in the last 30 seconds. Like people will know when they're, when they're kind of getting close to the end of the round, they'll maybe lax a little bit. They'll maybe kind of pull back a little bit. So you try to 
try to time that and all that. That Rose Holt fight was not, my fighter IQ was not very big on that one. I, I had a lot of opportunities. I wish every day I could have that fight back because I would have done a lot of things different. But you live, you learn. I guess there's no such thing as a bad loss as long as you as long as long you learn something. I learned a lot in that fight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they say you win or you learn, or at least the good fighters anyways. Um, did you yeah. uh, did you keep in contact with Rochal or maybe uh, look to train with him at all? Uh, no, I haven't uh, contacted him or talked to him or anything since the fight. Um, I guess only the main guy that you know that people would really know that I go and train with is uh, I'll go down to uh, Vegas to Extreme Tour and work out with uh, Roy here and there. Okay, big country, Roy Nelson. Yep. Okay. Yeah, maybe, so he can maybe teach me some of those overhands. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's notorious for. Uh... I don't want to say spamming overhand rights. That kind of has a negative connotation, but he he uh, has honed his overhand right. We'll just say that. Yes. And he's, he's yes, definitely and I, good at it. And I will tell you this. Even when his, even his soft shots are hard. <laughs> oh, I, I bet, man. That dude just packs a wallow. Yeah. So your third fight in the UFC, Marcin Tibera, you chose to kind of get away from your grappling a little bit and really work your strikes. Was that like the game plan going in? Just try to get some uh, time on your feet. Yeah, um, you know, I just didn't want to be labeled as another uh, wrestler. And uh, when Tibera fight came around, uh, we were looking at film, uh, you know, watching him, and uh, kind of like, well, his hands really don't make me that nervous. You know, I can eat, I can eat punches. That's that's no biggie, I guess. Uh, maybe later down the line, I want to work on that a little bit. But <laughs> you know. Um, and I was just like, you know what? I think my hands are just as well, just as good as his. So I'll just stand up. And in that fight, like in the first probably eight minutes of that fight, there was like three or four really good opportunities for a takedown. But I just I let him go. Like I'm like I don't want to I don't want to take him down. I want to stay on my feet and I want to sit here and show there's more than me just trying to bowl someone against the the cage and taking them down. And um and I guess in my last few fights I haven't had too big an opportunity, but. I'm not really a lay and pray when I do take someone down. I like to punch them when I get them down. Um, otherwise, there's no point. You know, punch them, they get back up, take them down, punch them again. <laughs> okay. And you definitely look comfortable throwing your strikes. Like, you definitely seem like you believe in your power. Now, um, can you kind of uh, give an honest assessment of where you consider your striking skill set versus your grappling skill set? Um, grappling still, you know, that's – Still my mold. Um, you know, if I get tagged or get hurt, I'm definitely going back to grappling because that's just that's just who I am. Um, but my striking has come a lot. I feel a lot more comfortable in the pocket. I feel like um, people might be even starting to respect my hands a little bit more. Maybe maybe not scared of them per se, but they're at least uh, respecting them a little bit more. Um, but it, it's coming along. You know, this is only this will be my you know thirteenth fight. Ever and I actually I didn't even really start really training training hard till about two years ago. So it's still it's still coming along. Yeah, I mean you're already you know in the UFC making waves. Now I noticed in that Tibera fight there was a moment where I, it was kind of quiet for a second and you just hear your corner go overhand overhand and sure enough you threw the overhand. Like is do you work on actually listening to your corner during the fight? And uh, and who was that? I mean, he's so I, I can hear him over everyone else there. <laughs> that was I would have to guess that would be uh, uh, Zach Thumb. Uh, he's a he's a guy kind of got me into fighting, and he's like my main training partner. He travels with us, um, and what the other my other coaches will <laughs> will tell him what to yell because he does. He, he you can hear him across you know the arena, but uh, he uh, no, I've always been a good listener, like. Uh, been able to i don't get too tunnel visiony uh, i can always pick up the outside stuff like uh always back in wrestling i could always hear my coaches on the side of the mat um and that's just something that transferred over to fighting like you know i'll be locked in on the fight but i can still grasp everything that's going on around me that definitely seems like a big advantage um but with that do you think does the crowd affect you in the same kind of way um no i actually don't notice the crowd too much um, unless they really start booing, that's only happened a couple of times, but, um, okay. overall, I, the crowd involvement, not too much. Cause even when you get a guy on the ropes and they start cheering, you're not in listening to the crowd. You're, you're, uh, focused on punching the guy that you got on the ropes, you know? So, right, right. um, 
that's just kind of one of the things that I, I guess I'm just naturally able to filter out without even thinking about it. I guess I never thought about it until you brought it up right now. <laughs> okay, well, um, let me ask you this. In the fight, you kind of, it looked like you sustained an arm injury on your left side. You kind of quit throwing it. And uh, what exactly went on with that? Um, right in my uh, forearm, um, about, I think it was about halfway through that, that first round, at some point he threw a body kick and I actually um, didn't have my arm tucked. I went out and blocked it. So I ate, ate his shin right on my forearm right away. And then I didn't notice it until, you know, about beginning of third because it was still going. It was swollen. It, it didn't really start noticing until third. And then I got, after the second round, I went to a touch. I'm like, that's really, really tender. So um, that stuck with me. I honestly think that was just some kind of like a bone bruise or something like that. But it stuck with me for probably about a month. Oh, really? After the fight, so I mean, it was it didn't feel too good. <laughs> but it wasn't fractured or anything like that. No, no, just had like uh, probably had a softball on my underneath my skin there for a little bit. <laughs> okay, so 100% healed going into yep. uh, your next fight. Awesome. Yep. Well, on your plate right now, you're headed to Belfast, Northern Ireland. Uh, your fight before was in Croatia. Is this uh, intentional? Or are you kind of using MMA to kind of see the world now? Um, nope, uh, it's not intentional on my part. <laughs> um, I would have liked to, after uh, Croatia there, I would like to get one in, uh, you know, at least in the U.S., so I'll get a couple more of my family and friends a little closer for them to go. But, uh, no, it's, uh, if nothing else, you know, two, two tri paid trips to Europe in a year, can't complain about that too much. Uh, um, I was hoping to stay stateside, but, you know, take the fights. I was laid off for quite a long time, so I'm going to take a fight whenever I could. Okay. Now, you got any plans while you're over there? Any sites to see or things to do? Um, we always, uh, wherever we go, we always take a couple days and go do some good, uh, good hard sightseeing. I know, um, like we got plans right now to maybe even head over to, you know, the Scotland for a day and then, um, uh, you know, come back and go see the, uh, maybe I even head down to London because we're going to go there. I think we're going to go about 10, nine or 10 days early. So we'll have plenty of free days. Maybe go down to London, check out some museums and stuff down there. So, no, it should be a pretty good trip overall. Yeah, it sounds awesome, honestly. Now, uh, your opponent, former Bellator champion Alexander Volkov, uh, real tall. He's like six foot seven, kind of a, you know, he likes to kickbox a little bit. What are your thoughts on this guy? He's making his UFC debut. He, you know, left Bellator. He had a bit of a, a skid there, went to M1 in Russia won some fights what do you think um i think he's tall <laughs> um he's, he's definitely very long um hands are decent but he's you know he's more of a likes using his knees and his kicks that's for sure that's kind of his bread and butter um especially his knees he likes doing a lot of power knees which uh could be a little bit of a factor on you know uh dipping and diving in um so it's just kind of something to be scared of and he's definitely a guy who you know has come up through the ranks i mean what's he i think he's got dang there 40 fights already <laughs> so, yeah he's like 22 uh, and 6 or something something crazy and he's got yeah, a lot of fights oh, yeah so um so he's definitely got experience so in that aspect you know the same thing with like tiberio when they asked um like is it going to be too big of a stage well he's already been on the big stage this is not you know this is nothing that's another fight for him you know he's was Bellator champ, you know, over M1, and it's uh, the stage has already been set for him. So this is going to just be another notch in his belt, another little, another little story in his, you know, his fighting career. Okay. Now, you know, in the past we've seen him have issues where his opponent would kind of get up under his hips and kind of stall him out against the fence. Now, I mean, your bread and butter is putting people up against the fence and controlling them and mugging them there. I mean, is that like the clear path of victory here? Um, it's uh, definitely something to look at. Um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be hanging out at a distance striking with them. Cause that's not, that just doesn't make any sense on, um, you know, for who I am and for who he is, but I'm not necessarily going to just uh, look for that as my plan. I want to be inside against him and throwing strikes and find movement and angles that way. Um, once again, like, I just don't want to, 
I'm going to try to intermix, you know, both my wrestling or my grappling and my striking. I'm not just going to go out there and, and grapple. That makes you way too one dimensional. And we are already figuring that that's all he's thinking we're going to be doing. So there's might as well, you know, fight fire with fire in that aspect. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what are you doing specifically to kind of work on the reach that he brings to the table? Oh, I figured you saw my picture. Yeah, I posted up yesterday. I didn't see <laughs> uh, it. Got, uh, I got uh, like two or three guys in the in the gym right now. They're about six eight six. Uh, oh, six, okay, seven. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, they 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 dwarf me, so they're able to they're able to you know for adjusting for reach and stuff like that. That's working out pretty good. You know, uh, my roommate he's six six um, six seven ish. You know, fights long, good kickboxer. So like working with him, you know, every every day is gonna be a lot better than I suppose to, you know, working out with other people my size. So as training partners go, we kind of got the reach thing figured out. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Now, do you got a prediction? I mean, how do you think it's going to end out? You think it's going to go the full 15 or early? God, I hope not. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, I, anything I'd say TKO. Yeah. TKO? That, that, That'd be about that'd be about the boldest prediction I go because I don't like predictions. Anything can happen in a fight. <laughs> okay. Now your your gas tank seemed to hold up pretty well in your Tibera fight. I mean, what do you think about uh five rounds? Do you think that's something you're ready for? Um, it'd be something I would get ready for. <laughs> okay. You know, just uh, it's just uh, going on, making your camp adjust a little bit more and uh, hitting, doing some uh, road work. A little bit more often, get you know your uh, your your uh, little, your heart strokes a little bit more efficient, and um, other than that, no, I think I'd be fine. Okay, awesome. Are you gonna bring the mustache with you into the fight? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> okay, I I uh I think I was on Tapology and they had a picture of you without the mustache, and it threw me off. I was like, who is this? Who's that guy? Is yeah, that no, buy it. Actually, only I only grow it out when I got a fight coming up. Usually, I'm pretty clean shaven or got a beard or just um, so people don't recognize me without it. Okay, <laughs> Which, awesome. So, I mean. with a win over a guy like Volkov, an established guy, what would be next for you? Um, then that's that's my fourth fight of my contract. So we would have to be get another contract before discussing any of that. I guess. <laughs> okay, so, so this is this kind of. All right, awesome. So maybe with a spectacular win, you would have some leverage to uh, negotiate an even better contract. Nope, and that's that's kind of the mindset that uh, you know I have. You know, um, honestly, I haven't talked to my agent, haven't talked to anyone, but um, I just speculation um, with a loss, I'd still feel safe that I'd probably get maybe re-signed again. Um, with with a win, though, it'd be a lot. A better you know contract deal so either it's a contract fight no matter how i look at it okay and uh you know stringing together a couple wins in the heavyweight division can really launch you in a in, in a division where it's almost like an older division you got a, a lot of guys in the top 10 who you know kind of been around forever and uh i mean it, it really wouldn't take much for for a new guy to come in just string together a couple wins and be right up in the mix <laughs> Yeah, no, that's for sure. Um, I think after my Tabera fight, I was actually uh, up there about 16, ranks like 16, so that was nice. And then, you know, lay off or, you know, I had to take a month off for military you know, obligations and, you know, kind of lost my rotation. So I had to wait for this one to come around. It's kind of the reason I had such a long layoff. So then everybody else is winning and then kind of knocked me back down. And so, you know, that kind of shows just how fast you can move up, though. So are you uh, active duty military? No, uh, no, I was in a uh, uh, Minnesota uh, Army Guard. Um, I just actually uh, about two weeks ago was my last, my end of enlistment. I'm no longer in. Okay. So, you know, that I did ten years and just got excited. Well, right now I'm gonna focus on fighting, and then when this is all kind of wrapped up, then I'm gonna go. I'll probably more than likely head back in. Okay. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your service. Thank you for that. Now, do you have any sponsors or people you want to give a shout out to? Uh, um, <laughs> sponsors? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, not really. I mean, my gym here in Fargo, the Academy of Combat Arts. Um, you know, we got a pretty good group of guys there. Got a really good program. Um, 
you know, it's kind of forgotten about. Uh, a lot of people, you know, always ask, oh, are you going to go to a bigger camp? Got to go to a bigger camp. I'm like, well, we got a pretty good thing going on here. Like, um, big guys, we got them. <laughs> um, you know, other than that, that's uh, just a good shout out to the gym there. Um, and my uh, strength and conditioning coach, his name's Eric Sweeney. It's uh, called Power by Design. Um, he was, I can, took him on right before my, uh, for a first go around before my, uh, Tibera fight and instantly noticed a change in how my body performed by working with him. Awesome. Now, uh, how can people follow you on your journey? What are your social media platforms? Um, uh, Twitter and, uh, my Twitter account and my Instagram are, uh, T bear Tim. So, you know, just T bear Tim. Um, and on Facebook, you can just look up Timothy Johnson. You know, it's got my fighter page on there. Okay. Awesome. Final question. What's your weight like for this? Are you, uh, keeping it as close as you can to 265? Um, it's kind of right around my walk around right now. Um, now I'll start dropping down a little bit. Like right now I'm about 281. So, um, it's pretty easy, pretty easy task. Um, but kind of a different, uh, different change around with, uh, doing some more strict conditioning body got a little bit bigger. So that kind of took me by a little bit by surprise, but that's, that's all right. It's all for the good. Yeah. I think Volkov, the most he's ever weighed in at is I think 245. I don't think he's ever been heavier than that. So, yeah, uh, and that's and that's something we're kind of preparing for with two. Um, like Shamil, he was small. He didn't weigh in very much, and then Tibera was the same way. But they both came in about twenty pounds heavier than what they normally were. So we're kind of anticipating Volkov to come in being around two fifty. So okay, awesome. Well, I'm definitely excited to see the fight. Heavyweights going at it. Timothy Johnson, thank you so much for taking out the time. UFC Fight Night ninety nine. Belfast, Northern Ireland, taking on Alexander Volkov. Best of luck to you, sir. All right, thank you very much. So there you have it. The 10 and 2 Timothy Johnson set to take on Alexander Volkov at UFC Fight Night 99 in Belfast, Northern Ireland on November 19th. Go check that out. In the meantime, you can read me on bloodyelbow.com. Follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. And go be a good person.